Hello my friends and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where I'm here as always with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we're going to begin proceedings with some not so brilliant news from both Nvidia and Intel. So essentially both the companies have issued security advisories this week and we're going to start things off with Intel as they have warned that their NUC or next unit of computing devices are vulnerable to high severity flaws which have a 7.5 out of 10 rating on the CVSS or Common Vulnerability Scoring System and that is a rating of high. But let's talk about these two flaws that the NUCs are actually affected by. It is a pointer corruption bug and a memory corruption bug in the system firmware itself. And the issues that these bugs can cause should sound unfortunately familiar as they allow that they may allow, sorry, should I say, a privileged user to enable escalation of privilege, denial of service, and or information disclosure via local access. So there is more information in the Intel blog on this topic linked in the description below this video. Um, so if you want to know if any of the products you have might be affected, go check out that link. It has the list there as well. And they have also provided some firmware for you to download if you do have one of these products to try and uh, protect yourself as much against it as you can. But what about Nvidia, I hear you ask? Well, they have also disclosed two flaws, but this time within its Shield TV. Now, these are also a high rating on the CVSS, 7.6, and again we have two flaws. Um, that may lead to information disclosure, denial of service, code execution, and escalation of privilege. So, one of the flaws, CVE 2019-5699, actually affects the Tegra bootloader via an incorrect bounds check. Uh, so basically this means that you can see an escalation of privilege and code execution. And the second flaw, CVE 2019-5700, also affects the bootloader. So again, that code execution denial of service, information, disclosure, and escalation of privileges may occur. So NVIDIA have basically said, in case you do own a Shields TV, that any software versions prior to 8.0.1 are affected. So if you're curious if your Shield TV device is actually vulnerable to these, go to your update section on the Shields and ensure that you have at least 8.0.1 or newer to mitigate against these vulnerabilities. If you're on, say, the 7.9, just for example, make sure you update as soon as you are able to. But let's move on from the bad news, shall we? We've got a few AMD pieces to discuss, the first of which is regarding their Mobility 7nm CPUs. So you may recall the reports doing the rounds that we would not be seeing 7nm mobility parts from AMD be ready until late November. But according to a new report from WCCFTech.com, or more specifically the writer Usman Perzada, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly Usman, uh, apologies if not. Um, but regardless, according to his report, according to his sources, we're going to be seeing availability in the first quarter of 2020. And not only do we know that, at least according to his information, allegedly we're going to be seeing a 6-core 7nm Ryzen processors and we're also going to see a very significant price cut for the average consumer. We're going to see the cost of these gaming laptops come down to $699. So again, that is significant and while this one is actually cheap, you're not going to find that hanging around down the back of the sofa cushions as I like to say, it's still much more affordable, you know, you could save for that in, you know, a few months, hopefully, rather than maybe a couple of years. Now, unfortunately, as many sources that didn't go so far as to tell us the exact specifications of what's going on here, obviously we can kind of make a safe assumption that we're probably going to be seeing the recently announced um, mobile Radeon uh, GPUs in there, the 55M or 5300M, sorry, 5500M, sorry, should I say, and the 5300M, most likely to see either one of those um, GPUs find their home inside these gaming laptops. And again, we're going to be seeing a 6-core 7nm Ryzen processor, also call these laptops home as well. And we're apparently going to be seeing a 12-hour plus battery life, which is not too shabby at all. Of course, we should wait for official specs and price confirmations from AMD, but I'm definitely going to be watching this one keenly. The mobile end of the sector is obviously very, very important. Release of high-end stuff is very 
key as well. But I've talked a lot about how you need to you know, fatten up the lower end, and obviously we're not really seeing anything mobile-wise from their 7 and M CPUs at all, really. So it'd be nice to see what's going on here, is what I mean to say. Anyway, that is me done for this particular topic. Let's move on now to Navi. You may recall back in summer, it feels like so long ago now, this horrible weather we've been having, that there was a lot of talk about ray tracing being mentioned in GPU drivers for Navi. Um, Kamachi spotted it quite some time ago and of course tweeted about it, which led to a lot of speculation if we'd see uh, any sort of ray tracing support for Navi um, on this particular iteration that of course we have now. Now, we recently learned thanks to a China partner summit from AMD which has been shared on Weibo or Weibo sorry should I say um, that we are expecting a new Radeon software release coming in December we don't know what these uh, features are just that the last time we had a significant you know Radeon release it was adrenaline and obviously it brought in a ton of new features and really improved things on the driver side of things for AMD graphics so does this plus the driver mentions that we saw earlier in the year have led to a lot of speculation as to whether or not we're going to be seeing DXR that being uh, DirectX ray tracing being enabled for Navi because while these um, Mentions have been spotted in the drivers previously. They have yet to actually be activated by AMD. So it, it is possible that we could see software ray tracing for Navi. But I'm a little skeptical that we'll see that this time around. Obviously we are going to be seeing some form of ray tracing in both the PS5 and Xbox Scarlet. Which will use AMD tech. So maybe it's the next round that we're going to be seeing hardware ray tracing with a mix of software ray tracing or maybe we'll see some ray tracing elements obviously DirectX uh, ray tracing is different to RTX, that's NVIDIA's one but we know far too well now how demanding ray tracing can be on a system and without the hardware to back it up it would be even more so so I'm a little skeptical, but it's not outside the realms of possibility for sure. I think it's more likely to be in the RDNA 2 GPUs we're expecting to see next year, but again, definitely possible, just not that plausible is what I'm going to say. Let me know your thoughts though guys, do you think we will see ray tracing in any form on this generation's Navi? With that said, let's finish up with one last AMD topic, that being Threadripper. So we've been talking a lot recently about the next generation of AMD Threadripper CPUs. And now we have a very interesting tweet from Re Revolution, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, on Twitter. You can find, of course, a link to their tweet in the description below this video. And as you can see, the tweet reads, quote, AS Rock TRX40 Tai Chi and Creator coming in November, not backwards compatible with first and second gen Threadripper CPUs. Also, third gen TR CPUs won't work on X399 boards. Now, also according to techpowerup.com, according to their sources and what they've been hearing, this is actually lining up with what their sources have told them. So basically, they've heard this rumor. Previously, and then Revolution came along on Twitter and kind of backed this up with information that um, he or she has garnered from somewhere. So the question that you undoubtedly have in your minds is why? Unfortunately, we just don't have an answer to that question at the moment. I wish I had some insights or rumblings or even whispers in my ear as to why this would be the case. You know, maybe it's power delivery concerns, maybe it's, you know, something to do with the pins. We just don't know. I don't want to go too heavy on the speculation here because I would literally be pulling information out of my arse and would not be based on any rumours or anything like that. I would love to hit your speculations in the comments, though. Do let me know your thoughts and opinions on not only this, but everything I have discussed in this video as always, thank you so much for your support, guys. It really is appreciated. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.